no denying Dean is a proactive man. <laughs> he has spent every weekend for the past couple of weeks and any dry day where he isn't working on other projects outside building that studio space and kudos to him he's it's so nearly there like in, in terms of it's so nearly watertight not complete complete but a watertight structure which is a pretty big achievement because so much of that process has been the groundworks and then the actual building up of the walls takes barely any time in comparison to the groundworks. So yeah, I have lost Dean many a weekends to that. And I can't really assist. You've seen me trying to assist and I'm more of a hindrance than a help because I can't lift. I can't lift the blocks. I can't, you know, I've got no experience bricklaying or anything like that. So um, it's best I just stay away and then once it is watertight I can help with things like plasterboarding inside and laying a floor, all that kind of stuff. Um, once it is watertight, it'll be great because we can use it as a storage facility until we start working on the inside of it because fingers crossed, our new sofa should arrive before Christmas and then we can wrap up the hay one and put it in that space. Um, I think we are gonna use a section of that hay sofa in there because basically what is being built outside is half painting studio for Dean and half office space. So we could use the corner shades in there, um, in the office section, and then maybe divvy up the other sections elsewhere in the house. Um, but until then, it, we can kind of just pop it in there, wrapped up. And So yeah, this weekend, I'm going to go to... My friend Abby has just moved house. She's having a housewarming party tonight. She's just moved into the most incredible flat with the most amazing view of um, London. And... Um, yeah, she's having a housewarming party, so I'm going to go down, I'm going to stay at hers for the night, which would be nice. And Dean will just carry on, <laughs> carry on with the studio. I always feel bad, I mean, like I said, I can't help, but I do feel really guilty that I can, you know, I'm just spending my weekends doing nice things, but um, the fruits of his labour will be very much appreciated. And he's so, so desperate to have a space to paint. I think that is the massive driving force for him to get this done, is that he hasn't been painting uh, for so long, like months and months. Um, you know, obviously we've been here for three months now, or, or maybe even four months. Um, and then prior to that, he didn't really do much painting because we were like packing up the house, and we were working on this house so much. So yeah, he hasn't been able to actually do his his painting for so long. Enter the patchwork that is the bathroom. Like the, the amount of different colours I've tested, you can't really see because all of them are just like much of a muchness and just very subtle differences in white. You can see these were really far too yellow toned, but I have finally settled on a colour, which is Holland Park by Mylands. It is, you can't quite see it because I've painted so much of the wall in this colour. Um, this is Dean's eye level, this is him, um, him trying to figure out which height to have a mirror at. This is the top of his head. I think it's probably going to be easier just to have a mirror that runs level with the window perhaps, so then everything's all in line. 
we're having a we're just getting like a piece of mirrored glass made nothing fancy nothing with a frame or anything like that it's literally just going to be a, a piece of mirror that sits on the wall because we don't feel like we need anything you know fancy uh, because we've got the shelf but the tile you know there's a lot going on in this bathroom so we just literally need a simple functioning mirror Right, it's 30 and I've already lost a lot of the light in here, so you might not actually be able to see half of this outfit. So tonight I'm wearing a dark brown cashmere turtleneck from Soft Goat, Arquette belt, black uh, wide leg cords. These are from the garment uh, last summer. They're a bit too long though, so I always have to wear a small heel with them, so I'm just wearing my tabby boots. This coat is from Sir Paris. So I put on my banana bag from the row, this is the small one, and then this triangle scarf, also from Soft Goat. It's exactly the same as the turtleneck, so I quite like that they match identically. Um, but it's just like a big piece of triangular cashmere, so you can do lots of interesting wrap techniques with it. I've just kind of thrown it on my front and then left these bits to dangle down the back, and hopefully it will stay there. Um, it's pretty cold today, so it is the beginning of like actually layering stuff i can't really get away with just like two layers anymore and then these really long gloves from these are are these studio nixon no these ones are from ray last winter um i love a glove that goes like right up to the elbow because then if you do get drafts down your sleeve you can't feel it it's been my job this morning to uh, repaint the fireplace because the colour that we use, which is uh, Farrer and Bull's Jet Black, is too blue toned for this section of the lounge, which is north facing, so it doesn't get much natural light. And it's leaning even more blue because this is north facing. So I did a bit of research and found this colour called New Black by Paint and Paper Library, which has a red pigment in it, which is much better for north facing spaces. Um, and actually, now it looks fine, doesn't it? But you probably can't see. I've, I've swiped a bit of new black there, and it made me realise even more how blue-toned jet black is. And this I've already painted with the new black. So in comparison, it really is blue-toned, and it was just, it was looking strange. It was almost making it look like we'd painted this a light blue because the, it was all bouncing off the wood. Um, so hopefully this will just soften it a bit. And... I'm still on the hunt for like a really big, nice piece of artwork with lots of like rich colours in it to go there. Need to think about what will happen with this space because once we've got a new sofa and we've got like lamps either side of the sofa, it doesn't make sense to have another light here. So this potentially could be more storage. And then would love sometime soon to be able to design a TV unit to go here, but we need to be realistic about what we can do in such a short space of time. So... I think perhaps it's maybe tackle this side first and then that. Not sure. Um, but something needs to happen <laughs> to really liven up this side. But Because that side looks all lovely. There's lots of fun things happening there. And then you've just got this. Today I've got to try and bridge that gap between outfit that is practical for a day in and out of meetings in London in the rain. That fit, So it feels comfortable, feels practical, but also feels dressed up enough that when I go to an evening event, which is just like a drinks thing at a store, I don't feel like I'm too dressed down. It's a, it's a hard mix to get right, but I'm gonna attempt it. First things first, neck scarf, because it's practical in this terrible weather, and it looks, it looks nice, you know, it dresses up something quite plain. Um, there are several ways in which I do the neck scarf. Um, this, I feel like a neck scarf works works well when you've got a slightly higher neck top than I've got on today. Because sometimes with a neck scarf, if the neckline's quite low, you then have this kind of gap with skin on show, which I don't particularly like how that feels. You kind of I get a bit of a draft. Um, I much prefer the scarf to all be tucked into the neckline of the jumper. Um, so what I'll do is I've, this one's from a brand called Foam, I'll link it. Fold it in half, corner to corner like so, so you've got a big triangle. And then I do a slight fold over like that. And then with this, I'm gonna put the triangle, hold on, I'm gonna make that fold a little bit bigger. 
I'm going to have the, triang the triangular section at the front here and then tie round. I'm doing this in the viewfinder of the camera, so whether this will actually turn out or not, I don't know. Whoop. Yeah, okay, that's fine. And then sort of, I'm going to tie this off to the side rather than central. And then try and tie it so that the longest section, the, like the longest tail, ends up going down. This, honestly, this, it sounds like I'm really overthinking this, but I think to explain it, it just is difficult. So then you end up like this, with the short section poking up and the longer tail end poking down. Then all of this gets tucked in. Just tuck it in. And then, oh, I've done a pretty good job of that, considering I didn't have any, I couldn't really see. Um, and then I'm just gonna, just put in some small gold hoops because sometimes I feel like if I put in a sort of bold earring with the scarf, it's all a bit much. Right, maybe if I open up this door, I might be able to shed a bit of light in. Um, I would love to wear these knitted trousers. I think the shape of them is so fun, but the practicality of wearing them on a rainy day, I'm just not sure. I don't think it's wise. I also, I'm covered in hair. Like, just covered in my own hair. Anyway, I also am unsure whether I like the trousers with these boots and it's the boots that I want to wear more than the trouser. But I think there's some fun to be had with these trousers and maybe like, I was actually thinking my Calvin Klein boots could look really fun with these. Anyway, I'm just going to swap these out for a slightly sm smarter, but also just slightly more practical trouser for the weather. That's better, isn't it? Just a little bit more tapered, feels a little bit smarter, just more suited for the occasion and the weather, I think. Um, these are from a brand whose name I never know how to pronounce. It's like Ro Rohe or Ro Roe, R-O-H-E, but there's an accent on the E. There's definitely something to be said about how fresh a tapered trouser feels, like bringing it back into rotation, having worn like long slouchy tailored trousers for so long. It just feels very clean. Um, they're double pleated and I really like how that double pleat creates a curve that then goes into the taper. I think these look much better with the boots as well. Just, yes, in terms of length and proportion, I just think they work a bit better. The boots are from Flattered and they've got this really nice like walnut heel that's small enough to just walk around on during the day but then just kind of adds that elevation that in the evening I'll just still feel like I'm kind of a bit put together. Um, they are like a glove boot, so the leather's very soft and sits, uh, fits quite closely to the foot and the ankle, which again, with a trouser that cuts off sort of around the ankle, I think with a glove boot, it's really nice to have that kind of like really tight, like slick look at the bottom of the trousers. Um, and then for my jacket, because I want to be protected from the wind, the rain and the cold, my AF Aga jacket manages to do all three of those things very well. But because there's no real sort of like blingy, shiny hardware on the jacket, I'm going to bring in a little bit of shine, I guess, through my bag because it's got this very egg-like sculptural detail on that sort of ties in with my jewellery a bit and just makes things pop a little bit more. And I'll be hands-free. Right. Yeah, okay, I like this. Do I like this? Yeah, I like this a lot. The only thing I was thinking was, do I want to do a tuck with a belt? But actually, do you know what? No, this is fine. Yeah. I can't see myself at all. The camera's so far away. <laughs> Continuing the theme of momentous house updates. We finally have a bathroom mirror. It's been three months, maybe even more. 
honestly, three months without a bathroom mirror is enough to drive you insane. I had started to get quite creative, especially in the evening, with my reflection in the window. <laughs> I was using that as a mirror, basically. Um, and to be honest, there's no real reason as to why it took so long, because it wasn't like I was hunting for something in particular. I, it was just one of those things that each week we were like, right, we need to go get a mirror made. We need to go get a mirror made. And then before we knew it, three months had passed. Um, so we just went to the place where, do you call, I don't know what the official name is, like glass merchant, glass maker. It's the place, a place where you would go to get like glass worktops or your shower doors made. Literally just said, gave them the measurements, just said a polished square edge, four screw holes, and this costs 56 pounds. Um, eventually, might get some like caps to go on there but it's not like hideously offensive it's not even something i really notice when looking in the mirror um considered something with a frame potentially could still put like an oak frame around it but at the moment gonna leave it like this um and see how it looks once i've kind of dressed things up a bit more i would like perhaps a fern at the top here, maybe hanging down. Obviously, I have a shelf now to just fill with loads of skincare stuff. So, um, yeah, at the moment, it'll just stay as like a blank uh, piece of glass. Right, we have reached the dizzying heights of four degrees. Or should I say dizzying lows of four degrees? It's Everything's frozen outside. This is pretty much my kind of go-to during the day when I'm just out and about and I want to be comfortable and warm. House of Dagmar leather jacket, it is, it's pretty big. It's pretty big and bulky. I sized up because I got worried I wasn't going to be able to get thick knitwear underneath it. But in hindsight, I think I probably would have been okay with my regular size. But it is nice to have it a little bit oversized, I guess. I've got the freedom to really pack layers underneath it. But it has this really padded inner, um, which makes it incredibly warm. And then this shirling collar, which is removable, is a nice alternative for a scarf um, so once it's all zipped up it is like the ultimate cold stopper heat tech wool layers all underneath uh, vintage Levi's probably counteracting the warmth of the jacket with a hole in my jeans but here we are um, Gucci I think they're called the silk boots the silk horse bit boots if you are hunting for them it's it's a waiting game because a lot of places have got them on pre-order now. Louisa Via Roma, I know, had full size range in pre-order when I last looked. And I think if you go on the Gucci website, all sizes available to order, but several of them are, will be a pre-order. So, yeah, you've just got to wait until they kind of come back, really. Um, and that that's me, just row bindle bag. New sunglasses, which I'm on the fence about. I think it's just a case of, like... You know what I'm like, I only wear flipping wayfarers. So these feel, they feel different. <laughs> Do you know what? So that things feel a little less harsh and sort of matrixy, I've gone for these uh, round cubit ones. They sort of are a bit softer, you know? I am here to show you some decorations that I just received that I think some of you will find quite fun. Um, I'm actually going to send these out to several friends as a little gift with some Christmas cards, I think. So they're from um, a woman whose Instagram handle is Sue, Sue Sumsi. And they're kind of like, I guess, unconventional Christmas decorations. And I have several friends that I know will really appreciate these. These stainless steel, kind of slightly unsettling <laughs> uh, shapes and faces. Um, this was definitely probably the kind of creepiest of them all, but I love them for that. That's my favourite one. And then there's a snake and a sort of like big sun slash star. I just thought they were really unusual and um, would make a, a fun gift for several people. Um, and then this bauble, hand painted with a crocodile on. I don't know whether to gift this one or keep this one for myself. I think this weekend I'm going to... No, I'm going to keep this. I love the ribbon. I love how big the ribbon is. And the ribbon has inspired me actually. I'm going to try and source something of a similar nature to, to like a whole roll to use as a garland. I have in the past done the whole dried orange garland, but it takes like a full day. I can see that DPD are now rocking up to the door. Be right back. Sorry, what was I saying? Um, orange garland, not doing that this year because it takes a long time. 
new house, I want to just try something new with the garland. We also don't have an oven, and I know I could probably do it on the radiator, but that would probably take even longer. We only have an air fryer at the moment, so I don't, that would just take forever doing it in our tiny little air fryer. So, um, inspired by this ribbon to try a ribbon garland, I, just literally buying a whole roll of ribbon and having that round the tree, either maybe like an ivory velvet or just a classic satin ivory ribbon. I'm not sure at the moment. I need to kind of, once I get the decorations down from the loft, do a bit of a sort of like overview of all the colours and then figure it out. But that won't be in this week's vlog. That will be next week when we get the tree. Um, the other thing that I was going to say is, because I've not actually said this out loud, I've replied to a few comments, but I've not actually kind of like said it as a, as a thing to everyone. I no longer work at the gallery, unfortunately. I did leave a few months ago. Some of you might remember, some of you might have no clue. Last summer, I decided to get myself a job job. I wanted to try something new, so I started working at a gallery. Um, and unfortunately, as much as I would love to see the art world thrive all the time, you know, I'd love for the arts to be forever thriving. It is an industry that ebbs and flows. Um, and yeah, unfortunately, it just got to a point uh, towards the end of summer where I knew my job wasn't going to be around for much longer um, just due to the art world having a bit of a dip um, so yeah the redundancies were made um, which is such a shame because like I said I just I would love it to be forever thriving but it was definitely a fun experience I'm very glad I did it and it has made me want to try something again in the new year I would love 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 to perhaps um, find a role within a female-owned gallery that really focuses on pushing um, and promoting female artists because it is a very male-dominated industry. Um, so, yeah, I, I just it was a very good learning experience and one that I will take into the new year and, you know, think of a new endeavour, a new job job, <laughs> basically. Um, but to be honest, it was kind of like quite well timed actually with the amount of stuff that I wanted to get done on the house at the back end of this year, having all of that time again to do that was really, really handy. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens in the new year. There he is, just plodding on. As you can see, there has been significant progress since I last showed you this. I think last time only the corners had started to be built up. So the entire thing is now built up. Ceiling rafters are on, the inside is insulated, you can see the insulation on the walls there. Dean's doing the stud work so that the plasterboard will then be attached onto that stud work. That will also be the stage that I can help because I can actually assist with the plasterboarding. And then we need to get just something on the roof, just like a fiberglass sheet, just to make it watertight. We won't necessarily finish the entire roof, but just something so that it's watertight so that we can plasterboard knowing that the plasterboard won't get wet. And then same with plastering, we don't really want any leaks on fresh plaster. Um, and then it will be a case of kind of just focusing, yeah, getting the roof finished and then focusing on the inside. The outside will eventually be clad in wood but that's not a priority at the moment because that's very much a finishing touch that can be done as a final thing. It's more getting the inside all finished so that it's actually a functioning space that we can use um, ASAP. I think Dean is now about to start building. He bought some secondhand, the, the double doors are going here. He bought them secondhand, but they were completely unassembled. So he's by the looks of it, now going to start assembling them. I only apologise for how shockingly lit this vlog's going to be. It feels like 80% of November's just been dark. Um, and it's such a shame because on the rare occurrence when the sun does come up, because it sits so low in the sky now, lots of rooms in the house are just bathed in this beautiful yellow light. You will have seen some clips like earlier on in the vlog. That was just from one random morning I woke up and I was like, oh my God, everything's like glowing orange. It was so beautiful. But yeah, that's rarely happened. So. I'm really sorry, like everything's going to be so grainy and just like badly lit. I'm currently stood in the bathroom, which is going to be terrible for the audio, but the window here gets like, because it's so big, it's actually quite good for low light. <laughs> um, so funny thing happened. I just had a phone call from sofa.com, literally just after I finished filming all of the outside, to let us know that our sofa will be arriving in seven days time. Obviously that's great, very excited to get the new sofa, but we thought it was going to be arriving sort of like 
a few days before Christmas. We were even told by sofa.com that it might not make it before Christmas. So for it to arrive like the last week of November is obviously great, but we're now a bit like, oh crap, we don't have a plan for the hay sofa. We don't know where to put it. Because <laughs> obviously the space outside isn't watertight. Um, so I think it's gonna be a case of trying to find, like Dean's sister potentially has some space in her garage for us to store it. So I think it's gonna end up there. And then in a couple of weeks, we can bring it back and put it in that space. Um, but great news though, can't wait, cannot wait for the new sofa to arrive. And then from sofa to hair, because I just, I really want to rave about a product that has just like completely brought my hair back to life. I said in the last video how since having it cut quite short and losing all that weight in my hair, it wasn't drying the same anymore. It was kind of drying straight, which is very out of character for my hair. And I've been doing lots of different drying techniques, using lots of different products. And finally, something has made quite a significant difference. It's the JVN Complete Air Dry Cream. I am so impressed with this. Um, I, I feel like I've got my wave back. I'm like, my, I've got my hair back. It's just like, I feel so much more, I just feel more happy with my hair. And I didn't really do anything, diff like I didn't do anything with it. I just kind of like put this in my hands and then just like spread it through my hair. Didn't do a scrunch technique or anything. And then just kind of just did that while my hair was wet. It's still like half wet at the moment. And then just let it dry. And this is the result. I'm like, this is impressive, really impressive because most hair products don't really do much for my hair. Um, all I'll do is just, once it's completely dry, maybe just slightly manipulate some areas with the hair straighteners where it's like really curved under and then just pop like a, um, like a wax or like a sort of like smoothing product through it just to kind of like reduce a bit of the frizz. I'm like, my hair's back. Like finally, I feel like, I don't know, I just feel like me again. It's it's quite nice. So, like I said in the last video, I just didn't, just did not like my hair and I was just like full of huge regret cutting it all off. But now I'm, now I'm getting there. I have to say at the age of 33 that my Christmas party days are almost over. I don't particularly like a late night and now that we have the wood burner it's going to be increasingly difficult to get me out of the house for that winter but this year I've had quite a few friends who have had milestone birthdays especially around like October and November and then in December I've got a few more. Dean's sister turns 40 next week she's having a party so there's been quite a few occasions to dress up for and naturally because of the time of year they've felt a little bit festive I guess um, but I don't really do like festive dressing in the sense of like sparkly and shiny things I just add a bit more jewellery I guess and try and make things look a bit shinier in that sense anyway this evening is my friend Claudia's birthday we're going out for dinner this is what I'm wearing for dinner so um these big kind of organic shaped discs from an Australian jewellery brand called Flash Jewellery I think I might just put a little bit of like gel or kind of wax through my hair just to sl like slick it a bit and then flick it just to hero the earring a bit more then I've got this sleeveless turtleneck on from Cos. It's really thin, so it's great for um, great for it as like a kind of like evening top, but also for layering under shirts. Cos belt, and then these brown chocolate brown tailored trousers from that collection. I love how like drop crotch and sort of carrot like they are. And then I tried this look with my tabbies. Sorry, now that we have the rug, it's really hard to sort of like showcase shoes. Um, now that um, sorry. I tried it with tabbies, but I felt like because of the shape of the trouser, it needed a slightly daintier shoe, which is where the, the new toe 10 boots come in very handy. Um, I'm not, I like the look of the really pointy boots, but I just don't know if I like them on me. I get that they work really well with like bigger, uh, you know, wider trousers, but I'm just not, I don't know, every time I tried them, I'm like, it doesn't feel me. I much prefer a sort of square toe or an almond toe. Um, but yeah, I got these um, in the Black Friday promotion on Vestia Collective. <laughs> what, a, what a lovely, sexy sock. <laughs> um, and then this, this clutch from Flattered, which is basically like carrying around a pillow. It's so soft, I love it. And I really like this satisfying snap closure it's it's great and I like depending on how filled I have it I like that I can sort of like roll it up almost like a bag like a paper bag and wear it really squidged under my arm 
So that'll be my look for this evening. And then I'll probably just chuck over like a big black wool coat. It's really cold at the moment. So I need to be practical about the layer that I put over. Um, I might even do blazer and coat or maybe just sheepskin, Corley Studio sheepskin, because it's the warmest coat ever. However, I'm not going to travel down in that outfit because I fear if I try to walk to the train station in those toe ten boots, I'm going to skid over on the ice. So I've just put on something quite comfy and warm for the train journey down. Gucci suede boots with some cashmere socks. You're not really going to be able to see any of this because it's all black. Got these really thick wool tights on from James Street with um, an old Cos cashmere turtleneck, and then I've got I've got two layers of heat tech underneath because I am quite worried about the cold. And then um, cashmere wool blend coat, this is quite an old one from Nothing Written. Arquette hat, gloves, and then this great big tote from Flattered that I'm using as an overnight bag, um, which has managed to fit everything in and still plenty of room. And a very small detail about this bag that I really like, which I think I notice more because I'm sure, is that I can hold it down by my side and it doesn't touch the floor. And this is an issue I have with these sort of like large tote bags is that often the handle is either too long or the bag itself is too deep and it just skims across the floor and it's quite frustrating, whereas this doesn't do that. The handles are, are long, but not too long. Um, I can still get, also they're not so short either that I can't get my, this over my coat. I can still, although I've got like quite a few chunky layers on, I can still get it over my shoulder quite comfortably. It sits there nicely and I don't feel like it's a struggle to get it on and off. It's a nice one for that. So a very good tote that I'll be using on the regular as an overnight bag and also as a day bag as well. Right, I'm gonna um I'm gonna brave it. I'm gonna brave the cold. In preparation for the new sofa arrival, which we're now two days away from, and also the Christmas tree arrival this weekend, made a few changes, just rejigged a little bit. We've finally installed the curtains properly because we basically temporarily just put like a single track across, like from here to here. So it looked a bit messy because you could see down the sides of the curtains, but we just weren't sure whether we wanted to commit to this curve coming out of the bay because the bay is square and we have deep window sills. Configuring the curtains has been quite difficult, but we were like, we need to, we need to give it a go because we need to have proper curtains. And also I was quite desperate to get the sheer layer up so that we could have a bit of privacy in the day, but still allow light to come through. And actually now that it's all up, I think it looks really nice. It just looks a lot cleaner, more seamless. It opens up the room so much more. Like this space feels really wide now. Um, so yeah, I love it. And I like that you don't necessarily notice it immediately, but it is still quite a nice feature when you do notice it. Um, then brought Roly Poly into the house because it was in storage for a bit. We weren't really sure where to put it, but we think the new sofa doesn't have a chaise. So this opening is going to be a lot wider. So we're going to try roly-poly here at an angle facing the sofa. I've also ordered the pad for the roly-poly chair. That was um, one of my Black Friday purchases. I found it 50% off. Uh, so we've gone for the black one just to, I didn't really want to add any colour to roly-poly. I just wanted to make it a little bit comfortable, more comfy basically. So black pad is on its way for roly-poly. Um, Noguchi will probably go back into this corner. Sorry, the absolute mess over there. And then a shelf is going to be built here, just underneath the plug socket. Plug socket, sorry. Um, so underneath that will be where we store all of the logs. And then above that will be probably this Noguchi and then just some other bits. And then the tree will act as the light source at that end of the room. And then I think Ingo Moira is going to go up into the bedroom. I'm going to test it in the bedroom. So things that are still we're still on the hunt for an ottoman really really want a nice big soft ottoman but i want it to have feet i don't really want like a kind of poof i want something that's off the floor um but that, that is also quite wide something of a similar size to the coffee table actually or maybe even a little bit bigger because once this chaise set like once the new sofa's in there's going to be a lot more space so we could actually have something 
much bigger than the coffee table. And then the other thing, not sure what to do with the mantelpiece. In terms of like Christmas decorations, I'm not sure what I'm doing with that. So that's all just like stuff that I've just kind of popped on there for now. Um, and then just want to get some new soft furnishings for the new sofa, like a, and maybe like a patterned throw, some more cushions. Um, and yeah, that is kind of like the current status of the lounge. It is becoming just such a nice space to be in, especially in the evening once the wood burner's on. Um, obviously still haven't found anything to put on this wall, but we put that Henry Moore print up above the fireplace. Kudos to Boehner for creating a dressing gown that I actually don't feel ashamed to be seen in. Today's Thursday, which means we are one day out from the new sofa being delivered. I'm taking this countdown very seriously because tomorrow's momentous arrival is going to be just a game changer for mine and Dean's back pain. <laughs> because that is the issue. The biggest issue with the Hay Mag sofa is that it doesn't have any back support. Or, well, it doesn't have sufficient back support in my opinion because the back is so low and um so you're kind of just constantly upright it's not particularly a sofa that you can kind of like really like lean into and it has no size so you can't really yeah it's a difficult one to just really lounge on and I'm 5'3 so I can just about like deal with that low back but Dean's a lot taller than me so for him that back bit just kind of sits far too low for him um so the new sofa has much higher back support, it has sides, it has way more cushions, it's just, yeah, I, oh, I can't wait. Um, I'm just gonna finish touching up my eyebrows. I don't know if you can see, you probably can't from all the way over there. I have got an irritation on my lip and it kind of is, has been on and off ever since I got Invisalign and have now realized that, oh well, I'm 99.9% .9 sure it is due to Invisalign, but it's taken me quite a while to to realise that it has been Invisalign causing this irritation this whole time. I did the whole like, changed out my skincare, my hair care, etc, etc. Nothing happened. And then we went to Sicily and the irritation like completely disappeared and quite quickly as well. And then when we returned home within like two days, it's back again. And I was like, what on earth did I do differently in Sicily? Um, and I was like wrecking my brain and the only thing I could think was that I didn't drink oat milk and then I had this like massive revelation where I was like I'm allergic to oat milk this is what it's been this whole time because it was the it's almost like a kind of eczema like irritation on my lip um, and it's always my top lip so I was like that that's it that you know when you're drinking your top lip comes into contact with the liquid I was like I've solved it I've solved it so I switched out noise downstairs but I think it's just in. Um, yeah so I switched out oat milk for cow's milk and then nothing happened. I was like great so it's not that oat milk um, and then I just couldn't I was like I cannot think what it is that I have done differently in Sicily and then I just was like I didn't wear my Invisalign. I wore it in the, in the I only wore it in the evening I didn't wear it during the day and I was like could it be my Invisalign and then I was like, it kind of did start around the time I got Invisalign. So I did a bit of a deep dive into Reddit. And there's quite a lot of people on there talking about how um, basically Invisalign makes it difficult for your mouth to kind of lubricate itself properly. So dryness is like quite a common thing that you'll experience with Invisalign. But in some cases, it can also kind of spread to your lips. Like I drink water. I drink tons and tons of water. And my mouth is just constantly dry. Um, and then other people were saying that it could also potentially be due to the fact that with Invisalign, you are cleaning your teeth way more than usual and also cleaning the trays. Um, that your mouth is coming into contact with toothpaste so much more regularly. And that can cause an irritation as well, which makes total sense. And then in some extreme cases, people are saying that it could actually be an, aller an allergic reaction to the plastic. Um, so I'm going to have a chat with my dentist next week. But to be honest, there's not really much that can be done about it. Um, it's just a case of kind of using, like drinking lots of water, using lip balm during the day. And then overnight, I've been using this... Um, Nooks Honey Lip Balm. 
It's a very weird texture. It's almost like a paste. I wouldn't use this regularly in the day. But as a lip mask overnight, I have noticed that using that does assist with the repair of, because basically it's like my whole top lip just like scabs over and then it cracks and it's quite painful. Um, and that kind of helps with the repair of the, the cracked skin. Um, so yeah, not what I was expecting as part of the Invisalign experience. And I'm just gonna sort of just live with it, I guess, until I'm done with Invisalign. This morning, I'm gonna go do some Christmas shopping because this is the first time I've actually kind of like thought, oh crap, I actually need to do that. And then I've, I've pulled Dean in to help me with a shoot a project this afternoon for Chloe Fragrances. I've got a very specific backdrop in mind out by the coast and we have such a small window of time because of the particular light that I want, I kind of want dusk and also just how quickly the sun goes down and how early it goes down now so it's going to be a very like bam 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 quick get this done type thing and just fingers crossed it works. Sometimes you have a vision in your head of how something is going to happen and turn out and um, it doesn't always work. Failing that, I'm going to have to just like come up with something that I can shoot at home tomorrow, perhaps. Not free of plucks, though. Location. <laughs> How does this work? <laughs> um, it's absolutely freezing and it's not quite the clear blue sky I was hoping for this evening. Well, hopefully. Oh, well done! <laughs> It's not goodbye, old friend. It's just, we'll see you soon. Uh, what an unflattering angle. <laughs> Currently sat on the sofa because the dining table's in the garden in preparation for the sofa's arrival. So the bed is pretty much the only place I have to sit at the moment. I'm just retouching all of the photos from yesterday's shoot for the Chloe fragrance doing a lot of retouching because the light was not great and we were on such a tight deadline yesterday was really the only day we had to shoot it so I'm doing a lot of fakery in Photoshop and I don't know if it looks weird or is kind of working you know sort of cool uncanny type of way you know like not that I'm comparing myself to him whatsoever but sometimes with Tim Walker's photography this is the first photographer that came to mind the there's something a bit uncanny about the way the images are lit and you kind of can't tell sometimes where the light source is coming from, but it creates quite an interesting kind of feel to the photos. That's the kind of thing I'm rolling with with this. I'm like, the lighting is kind of strange, but it's creating quite a cool look, I think. We shall see. Uh, I have to send them over to, for approval. Fingers crossed I like them. It's not often that I that I do this kind of like level of photoshopping. I just did not have the light. And also with fragrance brands, a lot of the time the brief can be quite specific and quite strict. So naturally when I receive a brief like that, I tend to lean towards a slightly higher, I guess, finish. I was gonna say production level, but I mean, you saw the production, it was just me and Dean stood um on the edge of a hill <laughs> um but in terms of the finish i think when a brief is that detailed i always want to try and like create something that feels slightly elevated versus when i don't know say like a fashion brand might 
be like oh here's this top we want you to shoot yeah just do it however you want and just post whenever um so it is nice to to do something that's a bit more like right okay i've really got to like focus on the finish of this um yeah i think it's working i think but it's hard to tell I've had I've been watching a lot of video uh, YouTube tutorials online and um, not YouTube like Photoshop YouTube videos because I there are still so many things I don't know how to do in Photoshop I'm such a Lightroom person but I know within Photoshop you can really sort of like there's a level of editing that you can do in Photoshop that I feel like Lightroom doesn't always allow you to do um, so yeah last night I sat and I watched a lot of masking tutorials and just like ways in which to kind of like change backgrounds and I feel like it's working I'll show you and actually my screen does need cleaning but this is one of the images that's another one and then this one as well I've just been trying to like make the background look a bit more blue whilst not making me look blue but then sort of making the fragrance pop um, and sort of where I've kind of cut, where I've altered the background, it, I'm trying to like make the edge of the coat much softer and more blurred so it doesn't look as cut out. And then I just need to sort of like play around with the shadows here so that it's not just all one uh, kind of like f so flatly lit. And then actually feel like yeah maybe I'll bring some shadows in around the bottom here but I actually really like how this one's turned out I love this one as well it's just yeah something I just need to pull the shadow down here I think but I love that the fragrance is really popping I was quite lucky that the light just shone straight through that um just play around like it was so cold so I just need to play around with the redness of my hands a little bit yeah, so they're the three images I'm working on and they've got some video content as well. Truly a vision of content and comfort. Football, new sofa. What are you eating? Cookie from Brett. Cookie from Brett. All that's missing really is something for you to put your feet up on. And a cup of tea. And a cup of tea. <laughs> um, this is the new sofa. Apologies that I'm filming this practically in the dark. Um, but just the excitement of the new sofa's arrival, I kind of just stopped vlogging. It's the Anders sofa from sofa.com. We have had a sofa from them before, so we were quite confident that it was going to be comfortable because our previous sofa from them was like a dream. The only reason it didn't come over to this house was because it was the wrong size. It was like a massive three-seater chaise type sofa, kind of similar to the Hay one, but even bigger. Um, so we've gone for practically the closest we could get to that sofa um we've gone for the same fabric but we've gone for a style that has arms and just more back support and it I mean, we've only had um one night on it and it's like it's just so much better isn't it yeah as soon as we get a uh, little footstool it's just okay. nice having the hay one obviously out of arms but yeah also didn't have your you could support your head yeah we sat and watched the film last night didn't we and it was just like so much more comfortable. Um, makes the room way bigger. Yeah, it makes the room feel a lot different. Like, I was actually looking back at footage um, of the Hay sofa and I was like, oh, should we have gone for something bigger? But actually, I really like that we've got the freedom to put stuff either side of the sofa now. Like, there's this is not the final resting place for everything. Um, there'll be lots of change. Um, but at the moment, this is just... Like, we really need side tables, don't we? Yeah. Like, I've got a pile of books at the moment there. And you've got a pile of books on your side. And, yeah, there's tweaks to be made, but, uh, but it's just already made our lounging experience so much better. Um, and I think this is a great time to end the vlog, because I think this vlog is going to be close to, like, 50 minutes long. Oh. It's a long one. Um, so, yes. Wave goodbye. Bye. <laughs> goodbye. See you in the next one.